One. Imagine being one second away from living your dream, then having it taken from you. How would you feel? You'd probably feel similar to IndyCar driver Marco Andretti. At the age of 19, Andretti was 450 feet, one second away from becoming the youngest winner of the Indianapolis 500 in history. In an instant, IndyCar veteran Sam Hornish Jr. snatched this possibility away, crossing the finish line just half a car length ahead of the young Andretti. At a race later that season, however, Andretti went on to become the youngest winner of any IndyCar series race in history. This got me thinking, how could a 19-year-old rookie, a teenager, rise from having his dreams crushed in an instant to accomplishing something else amazing? The answer, a growth mindset. A way by which one can develop their abilities and excel. We'll start our engines and watch the green flag wave as we first look into the definition of a growth mindset. Next, we'll pull into the pits for a fresh set of perspective on the difference between a fixed and growth mindset. Finally, we'll look into the benefits of a growth mindset so we can round that final corner and watch that ever so gratifying checkered flag wave. But for now, let's avoid doing any donuts in the grass. The groundskeepers work pretty hard to maintain it. The entire outcome of whether we succeed or fail revolves heavily around the type of mindset we adopt. One such mindset is the growth mindset. According to Dr. Carol Dweck, a Stanford University professor and researcher, people with a growth mindset believe that their abilities can be developed and cultivated through hard work, self-determination, and self-evaluation. Rather than seeing a limit to their potential, a person with a growth mindset refuses to settle, constantly seeking new ways to refine or even develop new abilities. Most interestingly, people with a growth mindset do not see failure as a definition of their self-worth. Rather, they see failure as feedback, an opportunity for improvement that otherwise would not be available. To them, not even the sky is the limit and there is no bound to how far a growth mindset can take them. But what about the other side of the spectrum? What about those of us who don't have as rosy or picture perfect of an outlook of success? The answer, a fixed mindset. According to Dr. Dweck, people with a fixed mindset believe that abilities are just naturally instilled within people. That those who can sing, dance, read, or write well are nothing more than lucky. Rather than seeing failure as feedback or an opportunity, they see failure as a definition of their self-worth, oftentimes feeling that expressing effort means lacking talent. Put simply, they see failure as a mirror, a reflection of being a failure because of experiencing it. And how do I know? Because I struggled with this mirror. I struggled with this mirror in my times as a musician and a trumpet player. At the beginning of junior year, I had arguably reached the peak of my abilities as a musician, attaining second chair out of a total of 20 players. I had even achieved my high school dream of making it into the jazz band. Arguably, I couldn't have been happier with myself. But unfortunately, it didn't last for long. Soon enough, I found my upper range fatiguing in the middle of rehearsals, and I eventually lost second chair to the player below me. I could have never thought that I had gone from one of my best times as a musician to one of my worst, because soon enough, I saw everything I had been working for, everything I had become, and everything I had wanted to become, tearing apart at the seams, and all I could ask was, why? Why couldn't I have held on to it? Why couldn't I just be good as the other guys were? And after lamenting this to my sister, she said, Neil, there's nothing wrong with being a work in progress. There's nothing wrong with that. 
And that's when I realized I didn't have to be upset with myself for being imperfect. For all of us, each and every one of us is a fundamentally imperfect person who through overcoming challenges and overcoming setbacks becomes the best version of ourselves. It had taken me five years of a Jesuit education to realize that this is what Open to Growth was all about. And so because of this, I started developing my growth mindset and putting it into action through practice. And thanks to my growth mindset, that effort paid off. At the beginning of my senior year, I attained first chair out of a total of 20 players. I took ownership of the possibility of improvement. And because of taking ownership of that possibility, the possibility of improvement became a reality of improvement. That's the power of a growth mindset. But a growth mindset can also help us in areas in which we otherwise aren't as strong as before. For example, those of you who know me know that I enjoy areas that I excel in, such as music, history, or social studies. But at some point during all of our academic careers, we all have to struggle through the infamous thorn in our side that is calculus. At the beginning of my senior year, in the middle of the fall, I had struggled with learning the rules of derivation. And it all culminated on a single quiz in which I earned a whopping 58%. And that's including an eight-point curve, by the way. And at the time, I felt devastated with myself. But then I remembered exactly what I had done with taking ownership of the possibility of improvement in terms of my musicianship skills. And at the end of my semester, not only did I earn an A on the quiz, but I also earned an A in the class. But more importantly, I learned that effort is not something just plastered on motivational posters in the form of platitudes, but that it has real values. It has real benefits on behalf of our abilities and on behalf of our success. Because ultimately, it comes down to the courage to stand up and say that change is possible. That improvement is real and that it's up to us to make it happen. And a growth mindset and its benefits can also be seen in more than just the two anecdotes that I just recalled. For example, in a 2014 study conducted by Columbia University, a benchmark assessment given to all students was eventually evaluated by assessors. Students who did well on the test were divided into two groups. One group was praised for doing well because of natural intelligence. The other group was praised for doing well because of the effort they put into cultivating their abilities. Ultimately, those who were praised for natural intelligence, the fixed mindset group, ended up taking on challenges that would not benefit them in the long run, but would validate their skills in the short run. Meanwhile, those praised for effort, the growth mindset group, ended up taking on challenges that would benefit them in the long run, even if they didn't perform well in the short run. Ultimately, in a final benchmark assessment given to all students, the growth mindset group far outperformed the fixed mindset group. That's the power of a growth mindset. That's the power of realizing that effort can have real benefits for us and that effort can lead to real success because we can turn those setbacks into steps forward. We can turn those setbacks into things that benefit us in the long run. And so before I leave today, I'd like to invoke the words of my sister one last time. There is nothing wrong with being a work in progress. There's nothing wrong with having to roll up our sleeves and try. There's nothing wrong with having to put forth effort once in a while. Because that's how we turn down the mirror of failure. So whatever it is you want to achieve, the time for waiting is over, and the time for action is now. So in the words that commence the Indianapolis 500 every Sunday before Memorial Day, Ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. Thank you.